the results are in. Last time I showed you three techniques you can use to turn noise analysis to your advantage. This time I present the results of the first of these techniques and show you the hugely significant effect it can have. Back in a few moments after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The first technique I showed last time was what I call asset filtering. This is a process of identifying the assets that are most suited to a specific trading strategy or style based on their market noise signature. The improvements can be significant and the impacts profound. But why does DarwinX produce this type of content? Well, it's because we want to support our traders on the DarwinX platform to continually improve, making it possible for them to attract investor capital. So let's take a look. The three methods that we took a look at last time were asset filtering, time frame filtering and instantaneous noise filtering. Now the focus of this episode will be on presenting the results of the asset filtering study that I've recently undertaken. But before we get into the results, let's take a quick look at the strategy that I actually used. So firstly, it was based on a mean reversion premise. And if you remember with mean reversion strategies, we're going to target those assets that are more noisy in nature, because the theory states that these conditions will help this type of strategy. And because I'm using a long short strategy, I decided to use currency pairs. And for the study, I've chosen 28 of the most common pairs. The strategy enters a trade on the break of an overbought or oversold signal and then exits the trade when the prices return to mean levels. I've also incorporated a volatility stop loss to protect from any significant losses. But of course, the strategy itself is not the sole focus of this particular episode. What our objective actually is, is to analyze the effect of noise. And so I'm going to show you three different sets of results. One, where the strategy trades all 28 pairs. Another set of results when only trading the least noisy eight pairs. And then finally, one that only trades with the most noisy eight currency pairs. And the measure I'll be using to identify those assets is the efficiency ratio. So taking all of that into account, these are the eight most noisy currency pairs as measured by the efficiency ratio. And so the theory says that these should perform well. But then our second group, which uses the eight least noisy, is the one that shouldn't perform well. But of course, we still want to undertake the backtesting on this in order to compare it with the first group. So let's now take a look at the backtest equity curve. And firstly, this is when trading all 28 currency pairs. So here we're not performing any asset filtering at all. And let me just explain the chart. The blue curve here is obviously the equity level over a 10 year period. The orange line represents the high watermark. So the highest amount of equity up until any point in time. And the gray line represents a desired risk tolerance. And I've set this to 10%. So in other words, if the blue equity curve falls and reaches this gray line, 
it means that we're currently in a 10% drawdown. If it goes below the line, then obviously we're exceeding 10%. And so ideally, we want that blue line to stay in between the orange and the gray, which clearly using all 28 currency pairs is not occurring. And if I had to estimate based on this chart, the maximum drawdown is actually somewhere between 35 and 40% here. Now, in terms of statistical significance, the number of trades that was generated from this mean reversion strategy is somewhere between 12 and 13,000 trades. And so I'm fairly comfortable with this level of sample size. And one of my favored performance metrics is what's called compound annual growth rate over the mean or the average drawdown. And here, any positive value represents a profitable system and negative values represent losing systems. So it is at least positive, but it's only a relatively low value, 0.252. And this is where it gets interesting. Let's now look at the performance of the eight most noisy and the eight least noisy assets. And this is what we get. So on the left-hand side, first of all, these are the eight most noisy currency pairs as ranked by the efficiency ratio. And as you can see, the effect is significant. We went from a strategy when traded against all 28 currency pairs that had a drawdown of somewhere between 35 and 40%. However, the drawdown here when we only trade these eight is somewhere around about 5% at its maximum levels. And not once does the equity curve reach the gray line. Now take a look on the right hand side. These were the least noisy currency pairs and these are the assets that are much more suited to trend following type strategies and are not suited to mean reversion. And you can clearly see that in the results. And this looks more like a random walk. Let's take a look at some of the metrics here. So the number of trades for the left-hand chart was just over 3,000. And the CAGR over mean drawdown has increased from a value of about 0.25 for all 28 pairs up to 1.55. So a really significant increase. And then over on the right-hand side, we've got a few more trades, 3,200, but here we have a negative value for the CAGR over mean drawdown. And so a large degradation from that of all 28 pairs. So if we'd started out on the basis that we were just going to use our system on any of the currency pairs without paying any consideration to asset filtering at all, then these are the results we'd have got. And we've converted those to this by doing nothing else other than asset filtering. So hopefully you've got a really good indication there of why asset filtering is such a powerful technique. Now, in the next episode, we're going to stick with results, but we're going to move on to time frame filtering. And if that episode is already available, then you'll find a link to it top right now. If you want to find out more information about DarwinX, then you can use the link at the bottom here. But now, until next time, trade wise, trade safe.